Hi, I'm Mike Peterson, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I'm your host, Jake Duffelbaum, and today as always, our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo with his pal, Murray Monster. How you guys doing? We're hey, good, Jakey. Hey. How are you? Good, Jakey. How you doing? Doing great, as, as always. Thank you for asking. Doing great. So, Jakey, who do we have today? Yes, yeah, so this guest we have for today... He's a puppeteer who performed lots of projects for the Jim Henson Company and Sesame Workshop. He made, you know, like kids' favorite country songs and uh, Sesame Street Live, Dragon Tales Live, and of course, Bear in the Big Blue House Live. He also part of you know, lots of other various Disneyland attractions. And, and of course, he's also a part of an Emmy Award Wing series, and Frog Walk. We boot Frog Walk back to your walk. And of course, we will talk about lots of other things that he's a part of. Here he is. Please welcome Mr. Andy. Hey, we're, how about you? Hey, Andy. How are you? Hello. How are y'all doing hey, today? Doing great. Right. Right. Doing great. Happy you here. Doing wonderful. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Yay. Great to have you here. So, so to kick things off, you know, McCann already did most of your introduction, but we know who you are, but for those who don't, would you care to you know, introduce yourself a little bit and what you do? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, you did a great job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank I'm you. a pu- puppeteer, puppet designer, fabricator. Uh, the voice actor on some cartoons and between all of those things I've managed to stay employed for a while so that's <laughs> always a good thing <laughs> awesome awesome so what was your background like and how did you grow up um, I grew up during a time where there was a plethora of great puppet shows on tv so it was you know when Nickelodeon had an afternoon filled with like today's special and pinwheel. Uh, There was lamb chops play along, like all these terrific shows. So as a kid, and then as I got older, I was glued to every one of them. Like all the different styles of puppetry, it just all spoke to me. Uh, And so even as a kid, I started trying to replicate what I was seeing on screen. So I started trying to make my own puppets and figure out, you know, how everything worked. So that's kind of what sparked my interest in puppets. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Wonderful. Wonderful. So other than that, how did you get into puppetry? <laughs> it was just, you know, there, there are different ways people get into puppetry. Uh, sometimes actors discover it and it becomes a part of, you know, their craft. For me, it was, it was like the acting and the voicing, but also the fact that I could use my hands to create characters. And, and make my own puppets. So it was the, the notion of getting to do all of that. The craft, you know, entails so much that uh, it was all very appealing to me. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I know, uh, as Jake mentioned, uh, your introduction, you, of course, puppeteered at various Disneyland attractions, including uh, the long-running stage show Playhouse Disney Live. How did yeah. you, uh, how'd you begin working on that? Because that ran for a long time. Oh, yeah. It sure did. Yeah, that was actually my second kind of professional job right out of college. I worked for V Corporation, which produced Sesame Street Live, Bear, Dragon Tales, all kinds of things. So I worked in their workshop for a good three years. And then after that, they were in Minneapolis. And then I packed up my bags and moved to California. And uh, within a week, I had a job at Disneyland. I, I, I started, I wanted to do Playhouse but there weren't any open puppeteer slots. So I started off uh, being friends with, as Disney people say, uh, a lot of the walk around characters. So I did that for about six months and then I auditioned for Playhouse and got into that, which was incredible. Nice, yeah, I never I never got a chance awesome. to see it when it was running, but it, I've seen clips of it on YouTube. It, oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. it was a wonderful it's show. Great. I was there um, through the bear era. And then they they took Bear out of the show and replaced him with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And at that mm-hmm. point is when I stopped doing the show. Um, but yeah, it was it was magical. And to get to work with all the Bear puppets were made by Henson. To work with those wonderful puppets was incredible. 
Um, and then the rest of the casts, we had segments based on Stanley, uh, Jojo Circus, Winnie the Pooh, and those were all made by Animax. So we had oh, nice. puppets coming from a couple different sources, but yeah, it was wonderful training. And, you know, anyone who has been through Disney and, and who did that show has amazing stamina, stam stamina because you have to keep your arm up and do eight shows a day sometimes. Right. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a great, it's a great workout, a great introduction to puppetry for sure. Nice. Yes. So I'm kind yeah. of curious, who are, who are some of your favorite characters to perform? Oh, well, uh, for Playhouse Disney? Yeah. yeah. The the bear segments were everyone's favorite. Oh, yeah. We had, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we had, sure. um, in the show, there were five different puppeteer tracks, and then there was the bear track. So the performer playing bear, that's all they would do for the duration of the show. And then under the stage, there were five different tracks you could play. I did four of the five. The fifth one I wasn't tall enough for. I don't know if you remember Stanley but there was an enormous gorilla puppet mm, and that puppeteer yes. had to be fully standing up in the traps to puppeteer. And I was too much of a shorty, but oh. uh, I, I did everything else. I loved, I loved Stanley. I loved playing the goldfish. If you remember, there was a little. Yes, that is the goldfish. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. 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 It was this wonderful little flocked rod puppet and it was so lightweight. So that was probably based on that one. One of my favorite things to do. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, yeah. There, there are a lot of good ones, yeah. Oh yes. yeah, absolutely. For sure. For sure. And we had, show. we had at that uh, time era. some wonderful puppet trainers who came in as the coaches, and they were uh, Greg Ballora. Do you know Greg? He's oh yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One yeah. wonderful yeah. LA puppeteer, and then the other uh, puppet lead. His name was Tom Fountain. Good friend of mine. Amazing. He played Salem the Cat on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And then did a lot of work okay. with, with the Crocs uh, early in his career. So they were wonderful. Wow. Uh, that's great. Wow. Awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. So you also uh, worked a lot with VEE Corporation, which was yeah. uh, so, uh, no, formerly the uh, company behind Sesame Street Live. Mm -hmm. You worked with their costumes and creator, uh, cre costume and creatures workshop. Can That's you talk right. about your work with them? Yeah, so uh, after college, uh, I'm from Minnesota originally, and uh, they were based in Minneapolis, and they had produced, they were the original producers of Sesame Street Live. So from the original tour up until several years back, um, they produced that show, they made all of the costumes in-house. So I worked in their creature shop. Um, initially, I was caring for, they had a big set of PR characters that they would use for public re public relations. Mm -hmm. So I was in charge of maintaining those and making sure they were clean and fixed. So we had a PR bear uh, for Bear in the Big Blue House that I was I would manage, a mm -hmm. whole set of Sesame Street characters, um, and then a bunch of characters for other companies like General Mills, like okay. the Tricks yeah. Rattle, yeah. So I was in charge of all that. And then after a year or so passed, I started making puppets for them because they were, at that time, Bear was one of their big tours. So uh, I would get to make Henson, made the original set, and then they gave us their patterns. And so we would make tutters and tons of otters, <laughs> all that fun stuff. Yeah, I, I love that show. So when I went to Disney, I already knew those puppets pretty well. Like I'd worked with them quite a bit. Nice, and I know yeah. I uh, mentioned to you on uh, Messenger that I went to see Bear Live years ago, many years yeah. ago. Which 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 one did you see? The surprise party or yeah, surprise party? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had there was that was the original tour, and then after that they did a second tour, and I'm forgetting the name of it, but it incorporated a human family. Yeah, then, oh, yeah. I'm I'm forgetting the name too. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, because it had a it had a lot of the characters from the final season of Bear in there. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They they added a Doc Hog, one of the biggest puppets in the world. Everything was made larger <laughs> so that hopefully from a distance you could still tell what everything was. Right. Um, yeah. And then they also incorporated Tutter had a mouse school. Yes, yeah, that's right. so yes, they did. We, we in house made all of the little mice friends that Tutter oh, had. Wow. I think there was a teacher too. Yes, um, that's right. It's Maxwell. So 
Yeah. Okay. Very yeah, good. Yeah, uh, well, yes. So we had a whole plethora of mice that we uh, would take care of too, which was great. And they were wonderful. They were, I noticed that that, that tour would play a lot of large theaters. So if you were seated up high, they looked kind of like little specks in the distance, but uh, they, were, they were very, they're very cute. A lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, are you uh, all fans of Bear? Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh yes. Oh my yes. gosh, yes. Gosh, sure. Bear. Bear is such an amazing show. One of the most oh. amazing puppet series or children's series in general. And I'm, I'm glad it's oh, yeah. up on, up on Disney+. Calming. Plus now. Yeah, oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Yes, and on my shelf in the back, I have the Big Blue House uh, playset. Oh, fantastic. Oh, nice. yeah. oh that's great. Yeah, yeah no, but Bear, Bear is such an iconic show. Yes. I remember, I recall back in the day, they made so much great merch. They yeah. were wonderful yeah. plushes and all kinds of play sets. And yeah, it was, it was really terrific. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, another sure. thing I did for B Corp when I was new is everything that was deemed not a show quality anymore would get destroyed. So early on, another part of my job was to destroy everything that couldn't be used anymore. Oh, boy. Um, so, oh, yes, yeah, so I remember being covered in just like big bird feather bits all day long as I hacked up all these costumes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, just because they don't want that those things to get into the hands of anyone else so everything right, has to yeah. be right, carefully right. disposed of to make sure that it's uh the integrity is kept within there yeah so that Absolutely. was a very in- right. interesting part of my job for a while yeah oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah so, and then if, if you want to hear a little more about b another cool thing oh, sure. is yeah that, yeah of course uh when i worked there they still had in storage everything from all the original uh tours that didn't get destroyed so i remember seeing like guy smiley two-headed monster like all of these incredible characters that were still there wow yeah and also um because b had done the muppet show on tour yes that's right they did they had so when disney did the live stage show in the parks they took those costumes from muppet show on tour and kind of spruced them up and just used them in the theme park so we still had everything they didn't take in storage. So there was like Sam Eagle, Zucchini Brothers, all kinds of like Miss Piggy gowns. And it was all wow. incredible to see. Yeah, close up. Oh, that's amazing. great. Wow. That's, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So so over the years, you also worked on a few different Sesame Street projects. How did, how did you start working for them? Um, So while I worked for Disneyland, it was at the time where uh, Disney was doing that thing where they were looking at double casting or recasting characters. So they were holding these big workshops. I'm sure you've heard about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was in L.A. and I went to the L.A. audition. Uh, I got called back for Muppets. And then after the callback, that didn't go anywhere for me. But then Sesame Street called. And they were holding what I think was the last of their big workshops where they would call in. It felt like 100 people. It probably wasn't quite that many um, to do a workshop that was a week long. And because there were so many folks, they would cut people day by day. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, oh. it was pretty. Yes. It was very intense. Very um, rough, I can imagine. Oh yeah. Gosh. Uh, so. I somehow made it through all the way to the end. So they would read out a list of names of who was to return and every day everyone was just bracing themselves. Uh, and I got through to the very end and on that last day, it was an Ernie and Bert puppet. So they were looking at, I think because those puppeteers were worried they'd be busy with Disney. Um, so we played Ernie and Bert scenes all day long and uh, Jane Henson came in she met everybody and was, delightful and lovely and it was a nerve-wracking day but it was also quite amazing to, to get to experience that awesome <gasps> yeah yeah, yeah. so uh and then after that point uh they started calling me in for little little bits of things uh started off i think i did a, a macy's parade first some outreach i did the country songs uh, we had a Christmas special that we did. So oh, love that special. Yeah. Yes. Oh, have you seen it? Yes, mm. I love it. Oh, I, saw, I think I saw. I think it's I remember amazing. seeing it like when it first aired on ABC. Yeah. 
incredible. Oh wow. That was that was an amazing shoot. It was one of the first times I had worked closely with like celebrity guest stars. I'd never really been around that much before. Um and the other funny thing about that shoot was, if you remember, that it was snowing a lot, like in some of the shots, some of the songs. And the snow was right. soap. It was like soap suds. Mm. They were yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, if you when you're shooting a song, it it often takes like a good chunk of the day. Mm-hmm. So they kept firing these suds at us. And by the end of the day, we were slipping on the ground. <laughs> we were kind of drenched. The puppets were wet from soap. It was a, uh, it was pretty incredible. That's kind of my takeaway memory from that. Actually, most of all is just all that soap you were blasted with. So I'm kind of, yeah, some kind of, was... so, some kind of curious what you uh, did in that special because I know there, are, like you said, a lot of celebrity guests on there. A lot of great numbers yeah. on that video. Yeah. Um, I remember uh, there was a number with the country singer Brad Paisley. He was in yeah. a Santa yeah, Slay and a whole bunch of penguins. Uh, I was the one mm-hmm. right beside him with the, they all looked the same, but there was one with a blue beak. Okay. Um, a different, okay. He's right perched on the side there. I got to That's do that. Funny. Uh, I remember, do you remember Ty Pennington? Yeah. From, I yes. think some uh, home improvement show. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. He, came in, yeah. he did a song with a count. I was there for that. Uh, Jennifer Hudson was there with mm. a big mass of, yeah different forest animals that was all puppeteer hands on deck and we're all puppeteering animals was was a lot of fun nice yeah awesome and i saw on your muppet wiki page you did the um i don't know if it's accurate but because it's muppet wiki but uh the finale at the end with uh kevin james playing santa yes yeah i I did i did baby bear for that um david david was there and and oftentimes when a primary performer plays multiple puppets they'll kind of decide which one they want to play and then they'll pick someone to take care of their character for them so i got to baby bear yeah um i was i was i'm a short shorter puppeteer baby bear is a pretty big puppet so i remember i didn't have tall shoes at the time now i do that i travel with all the time (laughs) but uh, i remember just reaching my arm trying to get that puppet as high as I possibly could um in the shot sometimes if you watch it back I remember he looks a little small (laughs) in the frame uh but yeah that was that was a blast and anytime someone trusts you to uh help them out with one of their characters that they created and that they care about it means a lot it's you know it, it feels very good to be entrusted with something like that yeah of course definitely. I know, yeah and definitely and i have the christmas special on dvd in the back right there yeah oh cool yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i know i wish i wish a lot of that stuff was streaming somewhere i know uh, right yeah. right right yeah maybe maybe hbo can uh dig deep and bring some of that stuff back <laughs> yeah, yeah i know yeah hopefully yeah hopefully I can only hope yes so right. uh so so as mentioned earlier another one of the things you worked on was a uh, kid's favorite country songs yes mm-hmm. what was it like working on that 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 was amazing that was the first because i'd done some little outreach projects that was the first kind of major thing i was invited to do um and oftentimes you know when you're uh, newer to a show there'll be a little gaggle of newbies and you all kind of have each other Mm. And in that instance, it was just me and then all of the longtime puppeteers. So that was wow. like, I walked in expecting to see, you know, some other people from the workshop and it was only me. Uh, but it was, it was incredible. So I got to work with that shoot. I mean, Kevin was there, obviously. Um, Matt, mm. Stephanie, Peter, like all of these amazing puppeteers. And so I got to go in, and I think the first puppet I did was this little pink anything cowboy Muppet. Okay. Oh, okay. Of, yeah, yeah. Drop, drops mm-hmm. in that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and then I did a chicken. There was a song of chickens. Yeah. And I remember oh gosh. she had this one little solo, and I went back, and I had the recording. And I just played. I was practicing all night, just these few little lines that she had, just to make sure that, you know, I didn't goof it up too badly. So, uh <laughs> Yeah, that was that was great. I also remember too. There was there's a Muppet green room, 
but I never left the set. I just parked it on an Apple box in the corner and just watched everything going on around me. And it was quite incredible. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a great video. Definitely. Oh, it is. Yes. Yeah. 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 It, yes. It was pretty great. Um, and I'm forgetting her name, but we had a country singer guest star. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I, yes. I know what you're talking about. But for- yeah. Um, oh, was, oh what's lovely. her name? Uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of good guests on that video too. A lot of other. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, yeah it was, uh, was it Leanne Womack? Was it her? Me? That's it. That's it. Yes. Yep. That's it. Oh, that's awesome. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, just awesome. just you, just you and the long term ones. No pressure, right? No <laughs> <Yeah>. pressure. No <laughs> pressure at all. No big deal. I'll be fine. Just people worked on Sesame for over 20 years. No yeah. pressure. No so pressure. <laughs> legendary folks and little old me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no big little, deal. Um, yeah. yeah, no big deal. <laughs> and I, I always try to go back and do, like, I don't, I don't watch my own stuff a lot, but I'll usually do an educational playback for myself where I'll be sit down. And I think puppeteers are the same way where, because we're always our own audience. So when you watch mm-hmm. your performance, performance you're always nitpicking like i could have strengthened that moment that could have been sharper but uh which is great like it's i think education oh, yeah. is a wonderful tool that we have um but yeah i remember watching it and i'm like okay this you know this seems good this seems okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. definitely are you all big sesame street fans yes. oh yes, yes. Oh, yep. amazing yeah yes, yes. I um I love that show like amongst all the puppet shows I watched and uh, my era it was all about Big Bird and then I remember uh-huh. also loving um there was a human cast member named Olivia on the show who I yeah yes. yeah 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 I think she I think uh the actress who played her I think she passed did she really years ago yeah so ago. um and uh-huh. she oh, yeah, she yeah. had. She had moved to. There was a sitcom called Two Two Seven. Oh, yeah. That, but she she became a star of that show, which is why I think she left Sesame Street. But mm. she just I always thought had the most incredible singing voice. She was so warm and wonderful. Um, yeah, definitely a favorite of mine. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you you kind of touched up on the outreach projects. One of them you got to work on was the Get Healthy Now show. Wow, you've done your homework. <laughs> yes, yes, we have. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Can, can you talk a bit about uh, the Get Healthy Now show? Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was shot very quickly. I want to say that whole piece was done in maybe two or three days. So it was very Whoa. fast. Whoa. Yeah, I, I think sometimes with the outreach projects, they don't necessarily have an enormous budget. So um you have to be efficient, you have to, you know, get the work done and be prepared. Um, that one, I remember, I was on with Ryan Dillon. He was there. Oh, wow. he, he, yeah, he's Ryan. a previous yeah. guest. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's amazing. Absolutely. Uh, he, he had been in the same workshop that I was at. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, he was there. He was a teenager <laughs> and so uh-huh. clearly wonderful. Um, and so we worked on that together and we were kind of the two new people, as I recall. Um, so that one, I remember doing a lot of vegetables, some like wow. background, anything, stage hand Muppets. Yeah, that was a lot of fun too. Nice. Yeah, I remember watching that video a lot growing up and I even have the, you know, I don't have like the actual DVD, like. The, the cover but i just i actually still have the disc of it and i remember it, and back it's just all scratched oh, wow i did not realize there was a dvd of that that's very cool yeah oh, right on. <laughs> awesome. well, well thank you <laughs> i'm very impressed with your library that's quite a quite a great collection you have there <laughs> well thank you so so I know you. Uh, you also mentioned earlier uh, performing in the Macy's parades. What was it? What was that? You know, whole experience like getting to perform in a few of the parades. That that was incredible. The first one I remember the best because it was raining. It was like oh, oh, that was parades. Okay. Yeah. So there, if you remember the float, there are two tiers to it. There's the basement level and then a top tier. Mm-hmm. I was up on the second level. And they had given me Rosita to do. 
Um, and the rain, like by the time all the puppeteers got there, my feet were soaking, not a part of me was dry. The minute that puppet went out the window, because she's got that long fur and she's got the ostrich, within two or three minutes, she was soaking wet. So her her poor hair was just stuck to her eyeballs and her oh little <laughs> was just stuck to her face. So I kept pulling her in and trying to shake her off and then pop her back in <laughs> to make her look all right. It was it was magical and also just because of the weather, it was so cold and wet. Um, I'll never forget. I'll never forget that. Another thing happened too, where it felt like the rain was pooling on the roof of the float. And then once it pulled up to a point, something would happen and it would just dump a pool of water right where I was. <laughs> so after a point, you just you just learn to live with it and try to do the best you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this was happening for the whole route. And by the time we got mm -hmm. to perform in Herald Square, everything was a little soaked. Um, and the other thing, too, is, we, you know, we work with monitors. And right. you may have heard this already, but uh, right. it's very much on a time delay when you're working on yeah, a live. Yes. Yes, so by the right. time by the time you see yourself in frame, it's too late, and they've already moved on to the next thing. So you just try to keep that puppet alive and looking happy and active, no matter what. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that was oh that was gosh. pretty incredible, unforgettable. I went back to I was staying in a hotel during that, and I went back and just peeled off my clothing. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> off. I think I went to bed immediately. It was just so exhausting, but it was it was pretty wonderful. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. You've been there for like I don't know, three hours? Uh, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> exhausting. Um, that... You know, I don't I don't know like the that. length. I don't know the length of the parade route. It was so amazing to me that it felt like it was 10 minutes, but it was probably at least an hour. Um yeah. and then you have to get there yeah, quite early. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. definitely yeah yeah i was so, uh i was working on fraggle rock and this past i don't know if you caught it but this past macy's uh we shot a little bit yes uh, of yeah. Fraggle uh, content yes i saw that yes. oh, i love that, oh, I love oh that. Yes. we all, we all got to amazing. set they had a monitor set up for us so we got to watch the macy's parade and see oh that's cool and watch wow our that's really yes. cool it's awesome yeah, that, that was incredible because we had just shot that content maybe a few weeks before, and then boom, there it is, you know, on NBC. Yeah, which was that was a lot of fun to watch, and then and then oh, yeah. seeing seeing Dave uh, play Traveling Matt, just oh, so oh. magical with that puppet, that, oh, that, yes. that bumbling Fraggle. He's <laughs> he's pretty terrific. <laughs> oh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, speaking of the Macy's parade, that the Sesame Flow, it's been the same one for years. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still use it. Yeah. They still Macy's use it. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, I think I noticed that when we were watching that it doesn't seem to have changed that much. Yeah. But when I not was on when, yeah, not at all. It may be a fresh coat of paint or something, but uh when I was on it uh the first time, they still had Barkley. So Barkley right, yeah. Was, yeah, uh -huh. was a part of was yeah, a part of that Barclay. that Load. he was a great we had uh we had a Barkley in one of the sesame tours and so in the shop when a character was finished we would do a fitting to make sure everything went together the right way and that was the wrong height for everybody except Barkley so whenever we had to do a Barkley fitting I was the guy who had to get inside and oh. that is oh. not, an, <laughs> not an oh. yeah the front uh I don't know how much there's not a lot of behind the scenes on Barkley I don't think but Mm -mm. Your front arms are actually on stilts to even out the length of your legs. Mm. So your back feet are on the ground and your arms are stretched out with some little stilts to extend your arms. Oh, you're, oh you're walking okay. up. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And then I recall there's uh, some kind of cord kind of tethering the head back just to support your head so that he's not looking down too much. That might have just been for the, the live show, but uh yeah, incredible, incredible costume puppet. Really uh, wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So, you know, moving on to some of your other puppetry work in Texas, you got to puppeteer some of the Chuck E. Cheese characters. What was yeah, that like? That's amazing. I actually, um, I make most of their puppets too. 
uh, all really? the two characters. Yeah, so uh, Chuck, Helen. Are you guys familiar with Chuck E. Cheese? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely. Yes. So uh, <laughs> yes. all of the, the main characters and then some of the side characters that have kind of become featured players uh, were designed by me. Uh, and then we would shoot content at the beginning, like three or four times a year. These days after COVID, they're kind of lessening those shoots. So they don't occur. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's wonderful. I was a kid who loved, for me, it was showbiz pizza. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. It was like the counterpart to Chuck E. Cheese, and they had a, an animatronic mm-hmm. band called the Rocket Fire Explosion. Yes. Mm-hmm. I loved. Um, and then they transformed that into the Chuck E. Cheese characters. But I, that was one of my favorite things when I was a kid growing up. So oh, to nice. get to end up working with them and, and making their characters for them has been amazing. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's Definitely. it's wonderful there um it used to be that every restaurant had an animatronic show mm. in the restaurant no right. more, actually they're they're phasing those out I think yeah maybe gone within the year but yeah, um, yeah. so what they've done is to compensate to keep the characters alive they've they've moved into the puppets and so we shoot those videos and they're they're broadcast all over the restaurants nice. just to keep the characters present yeah yeah oh. I, I love it it's a uh, it's a great gig, for sure. Hey, so Definitely. now you also uh, some of the series you've worked on. You worked on the Netflix series Waffles Emoji with former I... First Lady Michelle Obama. Can you talk about? Well, first of all, can you talk about what it was like uh, working with Michelle? Um, incredible. She has the most uh, graceful presence. She just has a warmth that radiates from her. Um, The unusual thing uh, doing that show is needing to get secret security clearance. (laughs) Right, yeah. Because because she's uh, such a high profile figure, um, when she comes comes in to shoot, the shoot will go on for a few weeks, but she'll come in and just do her stuff in a few days. But, it's interesting to be puppeteering with secret security watching you <laughs> from every angle. Um, yeah, and you have to be clearance. It's uh, I remember the first season they actually took our phones too, so we had to go through a whole day never knowing what time it was. We were both like, "What? No one has a watch." What? <laughs> but um, yeah, she's incredible. So I spent a lot of time uh, assisting and a lot of time just sitting right at her feet. <laughs> Just, yeah, just right below the first lady. And, and she was everything you would hope. Just the most gracious, the most oh. lovely. Um, and had time for everyone, even though she's incredibly busy. You know, she was very kind to everybody. Oh. Yeah, that was a great, it was a great shoot. So we did uh, a second season of that, which they kind of changed the format a little bit, but she was still very much present for it. So yeah, that was fun. We, uh, we also oh. that would eat real food food in the first season mm. they were oh. as realistic as possible so waffles would uh if it was a plate of spaghetti would actually take a fork of spaghetti and stuff it in her puppet face so if you if you watch the show we had a few copies of the puppet that we've cleaned um but if you watch the show you can see her getting a little dingy <laughs> around the mouth just as the she continues yeah. from all of that eating but it was cool to see a puppet you know actually put real food in their mouth which never happens so right because yeah. right, i know uh an example with like cookie monster they can't use real cookies because the oil will like damage the puppet so they use like rice cakes for sure, for sure. yeah uh, and in the second season of the show they uh they greatly reduced the amount of real food that that waffles would eat but she still did you know there was even a shot where she just dunked her head under the sink and got a puppet soaking wet which is always fun to do which happens a lot on fraggle rock too they they, they like water with uh, fraggles oh yes absolutely have you, yeah uh-huh. mochi, have you had a chance to look at it look, say that again sorry uh, have you seen waffles and mochi at all have you had a yes yeah 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 i've, I've seen it yeah we got some uh, really cool guest stars coming through there too, which was which was really fun. I know, yeah. yeah. And speaking of Michelle Obama, I can't remember who it was, but we interviewed someone else from Sesame um, who talked about because uh, we asked about celebrities 
on mm. Sesame Street, and uh, I think it might have been Allison Bartlett. I think so. Who played Gina? We talked a lot about celebrities, and she mentioned that she was so nice when she came on set. Mm. <laughs> She took the time to take a photo with all of us. And after season one, uh, we took a puppeteer photo, all of us together with her. And she inscribed a uh, picture to every one of us. Uh, like, uh, uh, oh, that's it, amazing. So much to everybody. Uh, I'm glad to be on my wall over here. It's, uh, it's pretty special. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, sure. That is a, that is, that's, 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 like what that's you said, great. Chris. That's a, that's wonderful. It is. Yeah. Sure. Or, you know, when you know when they're busy, you know, but you know, you now that's you know, they want to have a best time, you know. Yeah. Mm. Just, just such oh yeah, definitely. Greatest thing. To have. Yes. It's interesting because you never know where it's going to take you. Like, exactly. You know, exactly. You would have told me, you know, oh, you're going to be on set with the first lady. I wouldn't have believed it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing what? with that person? <laughs> it's like that can't be right. Like, no, 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 no. This is this is all a dream. No, no. I know, exactly. it's totally gotta be a dream. <laughs> I really do feel like that sometimes. It's like, am I here? Is this real? I right? know. Like, is this really happening? Is this like... real? <laughs> yeah, like you know, like we're. Happened while we were winding down, you know. He was at first, you know, of course, you know, lots of other puppeteers were the same thing. We're like, I'm not supposed to be here with, with, with yeah, working lot, with these people of, on us. I know, know, yeah. A lot of other puppeteers who have been on our show, uh, have like when the uh, oh, and and even celebrities too. I know Pam Rossiero, who was on recently, said, uh, when mm -hmm. when Tracy Chapman Pam's was great. on Sesame Street, yeah. Uh, she she played her guitar and she started crying. She's like, "Why are you crying?" And she's like, "I can't believe I'm here." <laughs> like, I know, yeah. like, I know, because the people who grew up with it, are like, oh my gosh, you know, there's uh, right, rest his mm. old Carol Spinney, or you know, yeah. Bob, or you know, mm -hmm. I I had a crazy moment the first Macy's parade I did. Uh, there was a meeting spot for all the Sesame cast to walk over to the parade float together, and it was at some cafe in New York that was nearby the parade route. Um, and I pushed the door open, I walked in and there I saw Susan and Gordon and all of my childhood favorites just sitting at a table. And I, that was- Oh that my was, God. That was definitely a pinch me moment for sure. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. That, you know, uh, for a lot of us, practically raised us in terms of what we watched on TV and then- Of course, the yeah. Audience. It's always mind blowing. Quite oh, incredible. Hell, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So you also got to work on a number of super simple projects. Can you talk about that? Yeah, that's. Oh my gosh, I I went in working with them primarily as they were doing a lot of animated series at the time, and somehow they got a hold of my voice reel, and I went in for an audition, mm. and they asked me in a few of their series um one is called the bumble numbs uh one is called carl's car wash and they i'm always sometimes i get someone will recognize my voice it's usually a kid when they hear me talking uh so that that was incredible and then that kind of transitioned into doing uh puppet work with them too mm -hmm. uh but yeah they're they're an incredible company um it's very much new media i feel like people don't consume media the way they used to uh super simple was built on youtube like they right. began primarily as a youtube content creator and now they operate a very large studio with dozens of animators and talented puppet folks um yeah it's pretty it's pretty great nice awesome yeah i've oh. seen i've seen some uh i have i have younger siblings who are big fans of it so i've i've seen uh i've seen i've been exposed to a lot of super simple on uh youtube so that's cool yeah, yeah their mm -hmm. prime content is is music videos for kids and yeah do, oh yeah um, for they'll sure. do uh, a lot of animated ones and then there's uh, a lot of puppet production there too um i don't know if you guys know trish lieber she was the original mogorg suit performer mm -hmm. yeah yeah so she was their first full-time puppet person who designed most of those puppets and built them 
Oh, nice. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. There was a huge treat, too. She's uh, very knowledgeable. So, most recently, you puppeteered on the Fraggle Rock reboot, Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock, performing the body of Pa Gore. What you got there? Oh, uh, just the Fraggle Rock Ultimate Visual History. Oh, yes. That is yes. an excellent book. Yes, it is. With a foreword by Neil Patrick Harris. If you don't have it, get it. Yes, yes. you should. It is It is beautiful. Uh, where was I? Performing the body of Pod Gorg, Wrench, Dizzer, talk, Giant Talking Radish, and many, many more. How did you begin working on such an amazing reboot like this? Um, Just like a lot of things, I, I got an email. I, having been involved with Henson over the years on, on several different things, you just kind of get into someone's list somewhere, and I'm not sure where or whom, but I just got an email uh, saying, hey, are you interested in submitting for that? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 so uh, they, they gave us uh, some scenes to play, and it was during the depths of COVID, so nothing was in person. So we received uh, some scenes where we got to pick out which ones we wanted to do and self-tape at home. And then we had to do some puppet choreography, which I love doing. So uh, they sent along a video uh, that Johnny made teaching wow. choreography. Yeah, teaching choreography. I think it was The Rock Goes On. Mm. And then, oh, oh yeah. okay. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So if you remember the original series, it was similar to, similar to that choreography, but Johnny is an amazing puppet choreographer. So he amped it up and made it a little snazzier, a little trickier, just to see, I think, what we could do with it. So we did our, I did a couple scenes and then uh, filmed the choreography with the song. I think they might've wanted to hear us sing a little bit too. Hmm. And uh, sent that away and waited, waited, waited for what felt like an eternity. Um, and then uh, finally got word that uh, I was gonna be a part of it, which was amazing. Um, and then at that point, they had some characters that they hadn't cast yet uh, that we all, I think, collectively got to read for. Um, wow. and in the end, they gave me Ranch Doozer, which was uh, a Dave Goals character originally. Um, and because Dave, it was during COVID, he didn't feel comfortable traveling. Uh, some of his characters, he uh, still provides the voice acting for. Mm -hmm. And some of them they felt just in terms of post-production, it would be better in terms of interplay and, and I think a little smoother to let new people take on some of those smaller roles. So yeah, I got to, uh, got to play that puppet. Uh, Dave was kind enough uh, when production began, uh, one of our producers, Tim O'Brien, asked me if I would like to hop on a Zoom call with Dave and talk about Wrench. And I was like, Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. What? Uh -huh. oh, goodness. I got to spend a, a nice hour chatting with Dave. And uh, it was it was fun because he kind of said that it was a character he never really developed and to go ahead and give him a new identity, basically, or, you know, take him forward. Wow. Yeah, which was kind. And then we chatted about ventriloquist dummies for a, a good chunk of time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, both have an interest in oh, okay. and studies. so that was a, it was a really fun conversation and to get to hear you know some of that history of fraggle rock and to get to hear you know he told stories about how he creates character um it was it was really incredible and dave is one of the sharpest most precise puppeteers in the world his work is so clean so delightful um so yeah getting to chat with a master like that was it was pretty cool another pinch me moment after the of Zoom course. call, it just happened that I get to. <laughs> uh, that's scary. Yeah. 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 He's very, very kind and, and he gave me this lesson uh, in, in whatever direction. Absolutely. So I, mean, I know a lot of Fraggle Rock fans are wondering can we hear a bit of uh, Wrench Doozer? Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Wrench Doozer. Uh, my best friend is Turbo. We're roommates. We live in uh, adjoining bunk beds, and uh, we have fun together. We play. We get work done. I'm a little nervous sometimes, but uh, we get it done. <laughs> awesome. uh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and another one of our personal favorites that you do is Jandolin. Yes, I love oh, Jandolin. Yes. Yeah. One of yes. my favorites. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
not cool here. But um, it's interesting to share a character with somebody. Sometimes it, it doesn't come easy, but with David, it just felt so natural. Um, that's another one, too, that we were halfway through season one, and uh, Tim O'Brien, the same producer, uh, approached me as we we're going into that script and just said that we would like you to do this. Um, and, you know, he, I view him as an ancestor of Candace. To me, I can see that. I can see yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Yep. I can totally movie. see that of Fraggles in my mind, and I've kind of made this up for myself, but in my mind, uh, Cantus taught Jamdalin music. He, he led him to an instrument and he found his song and now he's taking his groove, you know, into the next era of Fraggle Rock. Uh, I love playing that puppet made by Raleigh Cruson. Oh, yeah. oh just, wow. It yes. doesn't get better than that. It's like a Stradivarius. It's just the most beautiful thing. Um, so when I went into the first script with Jamdalin, uh, David would record all of the songs ahead of time so I could memorize his riffs because he would often ad lib and, and put something new into it. Um, and then he would do some line readings just so I could kind of hear his rhythm, get that into my brain. And then when we would go to set, I would play the character and do the, the line readings, kind of you know trying to vibe with what he was doing incorporate a little bit of my own stuff. And then after that, he would go back in and dub over my voice. Kind of nice. like uh, like Emmett Otter, how Frank Oz played Ma. And then Ma came in, Marilyn Sokol came in later and, and added the voice. Um, he is the grooviest guy. He's a blast. Um, he's a big puppet. And I'm a short puppeteer with kind of short arms, so I really have to reach. And then he's often got his mandolin, which is attached to his body, sometimes his back. So it adds a lot of weight. He's got that eight foot tail with two rods uh, on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Playing, yeah. Playing yeah, mandolin. They, you have to be careful. Yeah. You not get tripped uh, over. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't imagine. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on my tall shoes. I've got, <laughs> I've got a right hander. Third puppeteer trailing behind him playing the tail, so it's a little entourage. I can imagine, so amongst, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. three of us, and I'll often use try to use the same people. Um, Karen Prowl originally did my tail because she wasn't playing red that day or that that particular scene. Um, so she um. kind of toned for you know the cool movements, and then after that, uh, Ben DeRoche. I don't know if you guys know Ben. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. He would almost always partner with me and another puppeteer named uh, Ellis would jump in and uh, we all kind of found a group together. And, you know, you kind of try to move as one, even though it's it's three different people. Yeah. And then a fourth one, you know, with David. So it takes a lot of people yeah. to. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So I'm kind of curious. So, so far, do you have a favorite episode from Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock? Oh, that's tough to I would, though, I would say it would be the uh, the holiday special. Edition. Yes, uh, Night of the Lights. Yes, Night of the Lights. Yes. That's special. a great one. Beautiful special. Oh, oh my goodness. If Candace for that played heavily and was folded right into the main Fraggle Five for most of that episode, to get to sing "Magic Be With You," to get to do oh my that, gosh, amazing song. Oh, that was beautiful. Amazing yeah. song. Oh my god. I'm doing this. This is happening right now. I'm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, what? Right. With the close up of my stomach here, and that shot again, not easy. Three puppeteers on Jamdalin, and we had to weave in one master, weave around all of the other fraggles, and we're stepping over cords and like, trying not to knock over monitors and to move as one. It was a how I actually broke a sweat that day. That was, <laughs> but um, it came out beautifully. And man, just to like carry on a little bit of that Cantus magic and get to oh, yeah. pull that forward. Yes. Crazy. Oh, I never would have dreamed that in a million years. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my um, I do have, an, uh, speaking of it, uh, I have a favorite song too that I performed, which. Oh, oh I was about to ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> I was way up there. Also, uh, <laughs> I remember uh, Inspector Red. 
Yeah, Inspector Red, yes. Well, he got to do her song with three ink spots and red with her magnifying glass for a little. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. Yes, uh-huh. yes. One of the ink spots was me, uh, Donna Kimmel, and Garcia. And the gallery was just crazy choreography, popping in and out and around and jumping and getting ahead of the camera and letting it pass. That was a blast. Was so much fun. Oh, and God. those ink spots are the original ink spots. Yes. Uh, Dan Garza was uh, bringing that up, but that's recently. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Dan's I love, I love great. Dan. Uh, he is yes. amazing. He yeah, even okay, I, I, but uh. and they're all. I mean, they've been rehabbed, so you know there's new film inside. But um, it's crazy to watch. Have to think of watching those puppets in Muppet Christmas Carol, Fraggle Rock, and to think this uh-huh. is the exact same puppet that's been used on all what? of that. Right. Oh uh, yeah, and then a lot of arcade creatures too were all original. Um, anything made with are you guys puppet builders at all? Do you make no uh, starting to? Um, oh, awesome, starting <laughs> to, but like procrastination's a thing, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Uh, but I, I know people who are puppet builders, though, yeah, yeah, so me too. Yeah, there's a kind of foam called Super Soft, and mm. unlike the stipulated foam, Super Soft does not do that. So any of these cave creatures that were sculpted out of super soft foam are the exact puppets with little rehab. Um, so those were always incredible to uh, to get to play with too. Nice. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Do you guys have favorite Fraggle things? Favorite Fraggles? Favorites? Oh, oh wow! Oh my um, gosh! Not oh, oh. No. oh. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I will say, where do we, just... where do we start? John, Tarta- oh. John Tartaglia's Gobo. Oh, oh my man. god. Oh, yes. He, what he's doing for Gobo, he's doing an amazing job to keep going. What, you know, amazing. What Jerry amazing. Don. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So and Karen Pro is red too. Yeah. Oh, the fact yes. that she still got it. Yeah. Oh. And Donna's, Donna's Don- Moki. Uh, Honestly, Donna, every frog are like, you know, amazing in their own ways. So exactly. Like, yeah. It's like, it's, it's, like, it's just so. You know, like, like, yeah, it's just... do I really have to pick one? Like, yeah, no, you I'm... don't have to pick one, you can no. pick you, <laughs> pick, pick, pick. yeah, 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 Johnny. Yeah, I mean, that's but, but, but if, you, if you have to pick one, then uh, that's another story. That's impossible, yeah. <laughs> that's impossible. Yes, it is. Yes, he <laughs> grew up like most of us watching and loving right. that, show, and he knows that character inside and out. He knows, uh. Every he's like an, he, he and Karen Prell are like walking encyclopedias of Fraggle Rock. If you have a question about anything, you can approach them and they'll have an answer for you. Um, Karen, Prell, Karen Prell, especially, I remember they were digging out old Gorg wardrobe pieces and we were looking at them and trying to figure out where they came from and nobody knew. And uh, and Karen popped into the shop and sure enough, she's like, Oh, yeah, that's episode uh, 407. When <laughs> yes, yeah, she. She's uh, a font of knowledge. She's incredible. Oh my and gosh, she plays, sure. when, when she plays red, it's like not a day has passed. Red is red. Right? Exactly. Right. Gobo, it, Scobo, Mogi, Scobo. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost like with red, it's, it's, it's like 1983 all over again. It's oh. like day one. It's it's amazing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah John and you know, lots of other people you know, yeah. that keep on you know, amazing for what keep you know what do you know of no, no love in the original series and now that it goes to show where they've been doing doing the you know new series you know it's absolutely amazing absolutely so matter marty which one do you want to take the next one i'll take it go for it yeah, um and we, you know we oh we had never mentioned sesame uh, uh fraggle songs hmm you got a favorite uh are we talking original or oh, current yeah, um... we can talk current uh, go with the flow mm. easily. Oh yeah, oh, yes. go, oh, go, oh, go, go, go with the, That's flow. A good go one. the flow. Amazing. Um, um, every voice. Um, yes. Uh, as we uh, mentioned earlier, magic. Uh, a be party with Fraggle you. Rock. Party and Fraggle Rock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how, how of course, one, magic be with you. So. Of course. Yeah, I mean, those are good. I mean, that was that was so, technically so that was amazing technically songs. That was technically in the original too. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was in the finale of the series. So. 
and going yeah. back going back in, to the original series i mean it's a couple songs of course but whenever gobo and traveling matt sing together it's so oh, oh yes gosh yes yes, yes. andy do you, andy do you have a favorite song from uh back to the rock i gotta say go with the flow that's, that's yes awesome. yeah that was that was the first thing I shot with Jam the Land. So that was, uh, it's just such a great group. I always, when I'm talking to like friends of mine who are parents or I'm always like, listen, get the soundtrack. You will love it as much as your kids do. This music is just next level incredible. Um, yeah. That, and that's kind of the legacy of Fraggle Rock from, from the original series. Exactly. It wasn't key oh, yeah. music. It was just great music that that everyone could enjoy. Yeah, um, and, and of course we want to keep it going that you know level. So you know. Oh yeah. And we're just we're just yes. doing an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? Yes. Amazing. Absolutely. Um, when we're learning these tracks, you know, as a puppeteer, really play them as much as you can to learn every syllable on every every. Right. Piece. And you never get tired of practicing because the music is so great. Like Yes. Yeah. I even now I come on now. <laughs> exactly. Pop a song on it. Oh my gosh. A, I, I cannot wait for the second season. Oh, we're really excited about it. Yes. Absolutely. And it, and it's an Emmy Award winner too, which is even mm-hmm. better. Yes. yes. Won an Emmy. Like it was a show that people who's you know contributing what they want the revival series to be that goes to show they want to be as much of what the how much the original series means to us in a revival series you know it's it's incredible i think that what i've heard the notion was for back to the rock they wanted to stay true to fraggle rock exactly that is if they just panned the camera out wider so our great hall it it's enormous it's a two-level set uh for the first season we would actually go upstairs and lay down on the second level and be up there um they altered it for season two where they dug trenches so we could be standing which is easier but it was a magical place the gourd castle i want to say that's about three stories high in reality so when we would during season during season one, Pa and Ma would often be up uh, on the top level, and we would have to climb enormous all these stairs. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, and our poor, our poor wow. and little wranglers would have to come up carrying our larger pieces because it wasn't safe to suit up first and then go up there. Right. Um, so we would go up there, and it was quite a hike, and then get suited up in our our gourd costumes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the castle it's amazing. You can go inside of it. You can open the door and walk in and there's an entryway. It it, it what? They make it so wow. Real. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. When you're inside the window, there's an entire room. They finally finished it. There's portraits of gorgs, there's like gorg costume pieces and things dressing it like they Oh went my gosh. And yeah, yeah. So now, aside from uh, performing puppets, you also make puppets. You mentioned for uh, uh, many different clients. So how did so how did that kind of come into play? Um, I I was a kind of a self taught kid. Uh, oh, nice. Just, I I lived in a house with a very crafty mother who was always at her sewing machine doing something. So I was always kind of watching her. And I'd pick up pieces of fabric and then take them off into a corner and try to make something out of it. Um, and then as a kid, I started checking out puppetry books from our library, uh, one of which is called Tom Titchener's Puppets, which was my, my puppet Bible growing up because he had patterns and instructions. So as a kid, I started, you know, trying to, to make simple puppets. Um, and then when I worked at B Corp, that was my real training where I learned how to work with reticulated foam and entron barge and learn all the different stitches. Um, so yeah, I, I just kind of bloomed from there. Um, and then I just started getting inquiries and I would do little one-offs for people. And that turned into, uh, you know, Chuck E. Cheese's, uh, I had a mm-hmm. show with my friend, Stacy Weingarten off Broadway, about a year and a half ago called Rescue Brew that I got to design. And that was oh, cool. cool. Oh, Rescue wow. Brew. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. those, the puppets for that are beautiful. Oh yes. They look great. 
they, uh, they evolved over time. So we had done several workshops where there was, you know, very limited time and not a lot of money. And then as we grew the show, there was more time to uh, go into adjusting. Right. And we're, uh, there's going to be a sequel launching in LA this summer called Runaway Rue. So oh, wow. uh, nice. 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 Cool. a couple new partners for that. And it's going to be fun. I think got about a week. Awesome. Looking forward yeah, to that. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Sure. Should be here. So moving on from puppetry, you're also a voice actor. Do you have any favorite voice act voiceover projects you got to work on? Um, yeah, I would say like primarily in terms of uh, animation, my work has been primarily with super simple songs. So getting to do those cartoon series was amazing. Um, my favorite thing to do though, like I had a some primary characters in each, but sometimes there'd be a one-off character where they're just like, ah, give me a voice. And I would just get to come up with something ridiculous and slap that on there. Usually it's based on my own bad impression of a celebrity that's so bad that no one knows what I'm doing, but in my head, you know, I think I sound like Julia Child or I sound like Carol Channing or sound like someone. <laughs> uh, but I love, I love voice acting. It's when you're doing puppetry you're working twice as hard because you are physically using your body to give a performance and you're doing the voice acting and you're watching a monitor and you're when when you're doing an animation piece you really get to you're in a little booth by yourself you're usually seated comfortably with water and like you can really just focus on that one aspect you know of, of giving a performance um whereas puppetry is a workout man <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're on set, you know, eight, 12 hours a day hoisting your arm or in a, you know, 100 pound Borg suit. Um, it, it takes a toll on your body. So, uh, I can yeah. imagine, yeah, yeah. So, doing doing the voice acting is kind of a nice bit of respite where you just get to do the, the silly voice and the acting performance and not have to do all that physical right. work, yeah, which can hurt sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, the paw gorge suit his we weighed his head it's 12 pounds just the head whoa, whoa. wow oh my wow. Wow. just the head this oh shot is amazing because they do everything so they've thought about every every fabric, every you know piece of structure that goes into it. Um, so it's a blessing to be twelve pounds because it could be a lot more. Uh, thankfully, they care a lot about yeah. the goal. Um, that's good. Still, that's know, good. Twelve pounds plopped here, in addition to your two hundred and forty inch waist and your you know size thirty shoes. It's it, it's not easy. Uh -uh. It's definitely worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Twelve pound head. Wow. <laughs> right? That blows my mind just thinking about it. Sure. Yeah. The other lucky part about yeah. having a head on is um with all the servos going, once they fire those up, we have to wear earpieces for sound to hear our our, our voice actor because the servos are so loud in that head. Once you get it on and they fired it up, all you're hearing are electronic noises going on all, all around you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, to stay connected, we're we're mic'd inside so we can talk to our performing partner and then we can hear their performance directly in our ear. And the director too, so we can get notes if we need to. Right. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Uh, you were gonna mention something about uh, one of his Chuck E. Cheese things he did. Are you talking? Are you are you talking about the doppelganger one for Christmas? Oh yes, yes, that was it. That I I I saw the I saw that on your Instagram when you first posted it. I I was just like, man, that's really cool. Really is, really is the. Uh, Which one is it? The one with the multiverse of Chucks, or is it yeah, the one with yeah. one? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was the one. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, there was one where Mr. Munch had his doppelganger. And they're both singing a song together. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, Chuck, I, we have three that we use. 
Um, but yeah, that was fun. So I'm, I've learned through my building career to keep very careful patterns of everything I do. So that when it comes time to replicate something, you can pull it out of the file, spread the pattern out, and then I'm usually able to replicate it pretty closely. Sometimes there are like little minute differences, but uh, it's always a fun challenge to, you know, try to make something over again and match it as closely as you can. Um, yeah, Chuck, Chuck too, they've, they've got some great music. My friend Eric Neal writes all of their songs. They used to do covers, but now it's all original music. And yeah, some good yeah, that's right. Yeah. Some fun, fun little bops that they have going on. Awesome. To get to uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So we, we covered a lot of your past puppetry work, but is, is there anything you're currently working on that you can share? Two things I can't talk about. The only one I really can mention is Runaway Rue, which is going to be happening. I'm also, I finished a build for a new season of a show that already exists. And I'm currently working on a build with uh, Trish Leaper for another series coming up, but they're both kind of secret-ish. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But right now, uh, it's been uh, it's been a lot. Oh, my ride's here. Gotta go. Um, what's worked well for me in my career is that I've kind of diversified my skills a bit so that uh, I can work as a builder, I can work as a wrangler, I can be your voice guy, I can puppeteer. Like between those skills, I it keeps me going, which is great. And it, it's variety too. It's always fun to plop a different hat on and, and do a different job. So uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So since we're kind of getting close to uh, wrapping up, what would you like to say to those who have supported the projects you've worked on over the years? Well, I I hope that if people have enjoyed things that I've done, that, like that makes me really happy. And, you know, all the projects I've worked on that I've been lucky to be a part of have also involved dozens if not hundreds of other people so I think it means a lot to the collective that that folks enjoy what we're doing and and hopefully it means something and hopefully especially kids I hope that you know that are experiencing Fraggle Rock for the first time or super simple or anything right. else I hope that when they grow up it'll be something they remember fondly the way I you know love the things that I grew up with uh exactly. that's, that's really special to you know to influence people hopefully bring them a little joy little happiness a little respite from whatever's going on in their lives <laughs> yeah awesome yeah for sure if people would like to connect with you where can people find you um i i tend to use the instagram quite a bit uh you can find me there i also have a website it's andyhayward.me uh because com was taken by someone else um yeah been updated a lot but there's some stuff there there's some a lot of pictures of old puppets i've made and things nice want to check awesome. out my cards yeah absolutely yeah, of course links yeah. to those will be in the description down below so very cool. uh, very final question that we asked to all of our guests at the end is uh the question that either matt or of course marty monster will ask I'll take it. whichever one wants to all you, right you take it uh for the for those wondering his instagram is at a haywire for those wondering yes. uh, his instagram is at a haywire so last question we asked this to every guest of course this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show when you think of nostalgia what do you think of or how would you define the word nostalgia for me for me nostalgia it's kind of like a mental time travel it's kind of, it's a thing that takes right. you back to a happy time in your life. It brings back warm feelings. It brings back, you know, the happiness you felt as a kid or that freedom. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's quite a wonderful thing. I'll even drop in on shows I loved as a kid and it's just pure nostalgia. It's just all that excitement you felt, you know, when you were younger. It kind of brings that back to life for a moment or two. Which, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for Pretty sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Great word to send on. So, so, so Andy, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Yes. Yeah, thank, you, thank, you, thank you so much for, for doing yes. this and thank you for, you know, for what you've done to be a part of our lives and keep up your great work and can I see what, what's next for you? 
interesting. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, keep yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes course, definitely keep in touch, sure. Andy. I'll let you know when this goes up. Yeah, definitely. Stay in touch. I, do I have all of you on Instagram? It's yes, where I, you got us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, you got, and I, you I have you. On, I have you on Facebook too. Yes, yeah, yeah, on yeah, Facebook yeah, too. Yeah, I have you on Facebook. Both, both, so. of, both of them on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, and enjoy the rest of your day, Andy. Uh, th again, thank yes. you so much, and I will let you know when this goes up. Thank you. Thank you. And take take care. Take care, Andy. Take care, Andy. See ya. Wow, what a fun chat! Yeah. Wow, that was, that yes, was a fun chat, really wasn't was. it, guys? Yes, oh my yes. Gosh. I was, I was Andy's really, so I was really, amazing. I was really excited yes. to finally meet Andy. Uh, I've loved his work in Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock. Absolutely. Check it out on Apple TV Plus if you haven't. Please do. Please do. It is Please. amazing. We yes, and we're, like, we're begging you. I'm scared. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, we are begging you. And uh, get, <laughs> this book, this book if, we if, mentioned, if, if you can purchase Apple TV Plus to you know, do it. Watch the series. Yeah, do it. Uh, yes. Also, also get uh, Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock: The Ultimate Visual History. It is a phenomenal book, and uh, I think as of airing, we're coming up on our second anniversary, like very, Woo! very soon. Let's go! Oh Let's... yeah, it's right around the corner, folks. We got some big stuff coming for July. Oh yes. yeah, we got some huge yes, stuff I... coming for our second anniversary. Yes, for sure. Gonna be so, huge. Yeah, so, so, for that, everyone. Day two, so. we got wonderful episodes coming. But now it is goodbye from us. Yes. Yes, and as always, what do we always say, Jakey? At the end, in the all live, and see you next time for amazing more episodes yet to come. So, yes, bye bye, everyone. Take bye -bye. care. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye bye.